Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India in the previous class we had looked at uh, the operating characteristics of uh, nozzles we did both converging nozzles and convergent divergent nozzles uh, convergent divergent nozzles convert uh, a low speed or a subsonic flow all the way to uh, supersonic uh, velocities uh, but we also uh, became aware that it's not just enough to look at uh, area ratios uh, and the their relationship with Mach number. It is important to understand how uh, pressure ratios affect the operation of the nozzle and an important uh, uh, phenomena that occurs in these flows is the uh, flow choking um, that is the mass flow rate becomes a constant uh, once a pressure certain pressure ratio uh, is exceeded. Um, or uh, so uh, once uh, at the minimum area Mach 1 is achieved uh, then further on uh, any changes downstream of the um, uh, throat will not affect the mass flow rate uh, that is mass flow rate uh, choking. So uh, with these ideas in mind uh, let us look at a uh, problem where we look at all these various uh, regimes for a um, convergent divergent nozzle. Uh, so, we will go through these steps uh, once again, but now with a numerical example, uh, so that you understand the concepts uh, involved in uh, operation of uh, convergent divergent uh, nozzles uh, or convergent nozzles, uh, the principles uh, are similar. So, uh, the numerical example is uh, a convergent divergent nozzle with throat area of 1 meter square is designed to operate uh, with an exit Mach number of 3. Uh, nozzle is supplied with constant uh, total pressure. So, uh, supply pressure P naught is uh, uh, total pressure is constant. Assuming uh, one dimensional flow that is a quasi 1D uh, approximation calculate the following maximum back pressure to choke the nozzle uh, that is uh, the point at which uh, the mass flow rate of the nozzle uh, becomes uh, a constant in this case it does become a constant because uh, p naught is taken as constant a constant supply pressure ok. So, that is uh, a first critical point. Uh, so, if we uh, do go and draw uh, those curves again. So, we are looking at a convergent divergent nozzle the minimum area is at this point which is throat uh, at throat a area is a minimum and uh, uh, this uh, sort of uh, picture qualitative picture of how uh, the nozzle behaves uh, one should have. So, uh, this point let us say corresponds to the location of throat. So, a t is located here and uh, a exit is located here and uh, this is p by p naught 1. Uh, when p by p naught is 1 uh, that is there will be no flow and uh, the moment uh, uh, the back pressure so here supply pressure is constant uh, back pressure that is uh, uh, imposed on the nozzle is uh, uh, reduced. So, once it starts uh, reducing a flow uh, begins in the nozzle in the initial uh, stages uh, the mass flow rate is quite small flow velocities are small. So, as a consequence uh, the flow is completely subsonic uh, in this case mass flow rate continues to increase slowly. 
So, there is a particular point uh, when you reduce P naught to such a uh, extent that at the throat. So, at the throat uh, you achieve P star by P naught. Okay. So, once the, that is achieved that is you are able to reach the critical pressure then uh, Mach number at the throat uh, becomes equal to 1. So, m t equal to 1. Uh, when this is done then the mass flow rate uh, becomes uh, choked further uh, decrease in back pressure will not change mass flow rate it will not affect the upstream also so the uh, upstream will behave the same and so this particular uh, point this particular back pressure is first critical point uh, the designed pressure ratio according to uh, the area ratio you will have a uh, designed pressure ratio uh, p e by p naught. So, if that particular pressure ratio is given uh, or, or it is reduced to such a pressure ratio then nozzle will design it, uh, will work in the designed condition and there will be no shocks within the nozzle you will have a complete isentropic flow and uh, uh, this particular pressure ratio can be calculated by uh, isentropic relations and uh, that is known as the third critical point. So, this is the third critical point uh, while um, in between uh, the first critical point and third critical point uh, the back pressures are high uh, still high and uh, they do not support complete uh, supersonic flow all the time. So, uh, one case is that uh, the flow expands completely supersonic until the exit of the nozzle but right at the exit you will have a uh, normal shock. So, normal shock at exit that particular location is second critical point. Uh, in between the second critical point and the first critical point shock can be located anywhere inside the nozzle and after the shock. So, shock is a entropy generating process. So, you will uh, across the shock there is entropy generation, but after that you can consider an isentropic process again. In between, uh, so at if the pressure is slightly above the third critical point then uh, that flow is called an over expanded flow and oblique shocks are generated uh, because uh, the pressure uh, at the exit of the nozzle is now no longer uh, equal to uh, that of the back pressure. Back pressure is slightly higher, uh, exit pressure is slightly lower than back pressure and uh, a oblique shocks develop as a consequence. While um, the under expanded flow occurs if the back pressure is reduced below the uh, third critical point then the nozzle has not completely expanded to the uh, ambient or the back pressure it has capacity to expand and it will expand outside the nozzle. So, these are the, uh, the highlights of the various operating regimes. So, what uh, we can do is uh, for this Mach 3 nozzle uh, can we look at uh, various such uh, uh, points uh, in a um, uh, numerical sense and also the fourth question is um, the back pressure at which shock is stationed uh, in the diverging section at the location where the area is half the area of the nozzle exit area. So, uh, the area ratio uh, for the nozzle at which the shock stands is half. So, when we talk about the area ratio of the nozzle it refers to um, A e by A t. When nozzle is operating in uh, correct conditions uh, then uh, the exit Mach number will correspond to uh, the Mach number associated with uh, A e by A t uh, because at throat uh, the Mach number will be 1. So, uh, let us go ahead with this. Mm. So, uh, so, that is one important point that we should always look for uh, m exit is known to be 3.0. So, immediately we should uh, look at what is the area ratio A e by A t. Uh, which is uh, if it is under correct operation will be equal to A e by A star and for uh, 3 it is 
4.234 okay uh, just to uh, get numbers in place so that you have an idea uh, what are these numbers we are talking about let us assume that uh, p naught is about 10 bar uh, we could discuss it uh, in non dimensional uh, numbers also p by p naught is enough but this gives a feel for numbers what are we talking about so uh, when uh, uh, the first critical point occurs when uh, the uh, Mach number at throat is 1 and at the exit uh, the flow is still a subsonic. So, uh, the flow there are no shocks inside so flow is uh, isentropic and uh, uh, what is the pressure at which uh, flow chokes at the nozzle that is equal to P star by uh, P naught and for air uh, this is uh, constant. So, it is for air it is uh, with gamma 1.4 0 0.52828 okay so you can see that it is uh, about 5.3 uh, bar okay 5.28 bar okay so uh, when uh, this particular pressure is uh, achieved at the throat uh, the throat uh, mach number becomes equal to 1 uh, the flow chokes uh, from uh, that point onwards if the exit back pressure is continuously reduced uh, it will not affect uh, upstream sections from the uh, throat. Uh, further reduction from this point will start uh, supersonic flow in the diverging section, but uh, the flow cannot be supersonic all through the uh, nozzle because the back pressure does not support it at the exit you still uh, need to have the back pressure. Uh, quite low. Mm, so, as a consequence shocks develop in the uh, diverging portion. So, these uh, series of uh, 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 development can be seen when one starts a nozzle uh, in uh, certain applications like wind tunnels and uh, such uh, uh, applications. So, if there is a supersonic nozzle and uh, before operating the wind tunnel everything will be closed high pressure will be there um, in the uh, reservoirs and then the nozzle is uh, the uh, valve is opened. So, slowly the pressure starts being felt by the uh, nozzle and uh, uh, all these various uh, steps that we discuss here uh, can be uh, encountered uh, in uh, such an operation. Uh, so, this is uh, 5.28 bar, but this is at the throat. So, what will it be at the exit? Uh, so, at the exit it will be subsonic, uh, but uh, Mach number equal to 1 at throat, but M E is subsonic. So, uh, very uh, uh, if you look at this, you know A E by A star because this is already fixed by uh, the nozzle the design of the nozzle that is 4.234. But we also know that for a given A e by A star there are two possible uh, solutions uh, one is in the subsonic domain one is in the supersonic domain. While designing this nozzle uh, the designers would have designed it for the supersonic operation but currently it is operating subsonic condition with Mach number 1 at the throat. So, we look for the subsonic solution for this given A e by A star and that corresponding uh, subsonic value is uh, 0 0.138. Now, the flow is completely uh, uh, subsonic uh, therefore, you can uh, calculate what is uh, P e by P naught uh, this turns out to be 0 0.9867. So, you get uh, the exit pressure uh, if we take P naught is around 10 bar exit pressure is 9.86767 bar. So, it will be around uh, this value that is for uh, the case when uh, the throat is at Mach 1 and exit is Mm, subsonic. Now, the second case is uh, that 
pressure ratio is exactly equal to complete expansion there are no shocks and uh, it expands completely so that is the third uh, critical point actually so uh, for that uh, we know uh, the Mach number Me is um, 3.0 corresponding to this isentropic relations what is Pe by P0 uh, this is uh, 0 0.0 272 okay so uh, you see that uh, for uh, 10 bar upstream pressure you really need to give quite low pressures in order to achieve uh, Mach 3 complete expansion without shocks uh, in the nozzle and uh, you can get this uh, number it will be the exit back pressure should be equal to exit pressure and uh, it will be 0.272 bar ok so uh, that is the uh, point at which uh, there will be complete uh, supersonic flow through the nozzle and at the exit as well now the uh, let us go back to the uh, picture that we had done before so that is uh, third critical point now uh, uh, what we need to find out is what is this pressure at which uh, the flow is completely uh, supersonic uh, throughout the nozzle uh, divergent portion of the nozzle uh, but at the exit uh, it encounters a uh, normal shock so still at the exit if it does that at the exit the flow is subsonic when flow is subsonic at the exit then the pressure at the exit will match uh, the back pressure so that pressure we have to find out uh, so uh, here the nozzle operates uh, so that uh, within the nozzle uh, uh, divergent portion of the nozzle you have complete supersonic flow so m is uh, 3.0 uh, but right at the exit there is a normal shock normal shock is a discontinuity so uh, you have to calculate normal shock at uh, 3.0 and uh, pressure ratio across the normal shock uh, P2 by P1 is 10.33. Uh, uh, so, uh, if one were to calculate what would be the exit back pressure, so Pb by P01 at this particular condition, it would be uh, uh, Pb will be equal to P2, Pb equal to P2. So, it is uh, P2 by P1 multiplied by P1 by uh, P01, where P1 by P, P01 uh, corresponds to uh, complete isentropic expansion, and P2 by P1 is across the shock, so 10.33 multiplied by 0 0.0272 is um, 0 0.281. So, uh, the back pressure when this would uh, be achieved is 2.81 bar, ok. So, you see it is considerably high. Uh, compared to a uh, completely expanded flow ok. Uh, now uh, let us consider the case where you may have a normal shock uh, within the uh, divergent portion there is a subsonic flow there is a supersonic flow that starts um, uh, from the throat but if the back pressure does not support so until you reach uh, back pressures of uh, at least 2.81 bar it will not support full uh, supersonic flow uh, that means exit will be subsonic mm, so this can be achieved uh, by a normal shock so this is a model uh, of the flow that happens within nozzles it is uh, so if you look at this uh, section then the flow has uh, become it has achieved mach 1 at throat uh, it continues to expand so m is greater than 1 but somewhere in the nozzle there is a uh, shock so here there is a shock sitting uh, at certain area ratio okay so you can take this as throat this point is 1 2 and uh, this is exit okay so uh, shock is a discontinuity so it has the same uh, it is at that particular uh, area ratio uh, the mass flow rate 
that is supplied uh, is choked. So, mass flow rate does not change here. So, m dot is constant is constant. So, uh, before uh, uh, the uh, nozzle the before the uh, shock as it goes through the throat uh, the m dot can be uh, written as uh, p 0 uh, multiplied by uh, the throat area uh, that is uh, in if it is 1 it is a star. So, for it is for uh, location if you consider 1 uh, for point 1 it is a 1 star a 1 star is the same uh, in an isentropic flow uh, the star area does not change p 0 uh, a 1 star uh, is the uh, by uh, square root of uh, t 0 and it gets multiplied by a constant uh, uh, this constant I will say is uh, c. So, uh, uh, stagnation temperature is a constant it is an adiabatic flow. So, uh, essentially it is dependent on p 0 a 1 star uh, and uh, everything else is a constant. But now you have a shock in between across the shock mass is conserved. So, uh, your mass flow rate uh, is conserved. Uh, so, uh, across the shock if I take 2 uh, then at 2 also uh, mass flow rate should be the same, but what about uh, uh, p 0. So, p 0 across the shock is not constant uh, because there is entropy generation. So, what has happened now? Mm, so, p 0 is not constant rest everything they are constants. So, something else must have changed. So, uh, yes it would have changed that is the um, uh, area ratio for uh, uh, that particular Mach number after the shock. So, before the shock there is uh, you have a supersonic Mach number after the shock there is a subsonic Mach number. If you calculate the star area for that subsonic Mach number it will not be equal to a 1 star. Okay, so, um, uh, since mass flow rates are equal uh, you have p 0 1 a 1 star equal to uh, this is a general formula it is uh, not uh, restricted to any case early requirement is it should be a star area. So, uh, what is a 2 star? Uh, it should be p 0 2 okay, multiplied by p 0 2. So, p 0 1 a 1 star is equal to p 0 2 a 2 star. So, this is the uh, guiding principle uh, which will allow us to uh, solve such problems. There is an entropy generation at the shock. Uh, as a consequence uh, the star area uh, changes. Uh, this principle if you remember many many cases in area variable area ducts which we will discuss more often in diffusers um, where uh, shocks can be easily seen in variable area ducts and the way to solve such problems is to uh, use this uh, guiding principle. Uh, so, uh, how do we go with this problem? Okay. So, uh, with this particular problem the area ratio at which the shock stands is given it is half that of uh, uh, the exit area ratio. So, it is uh, 4.234. Uh, divided by 2 which is 2.117. Okay, so, we know the area ratio at this point and uh, the flow is supersonic until this particular area ratio. So, that means, uh, at the throat it was 1 and till 2.117 uh, the area ratio of 2.117 it is supersonic. So, we can calculate what was the Mach number at that uh, particular area ratio. So, m 1 is known. So, you can find that out it is 2.261 and corresponding to this area ratio the p by p naught is 0 0.085. Uh, now, uh, shock is at this particular area ratio. So, m 1 is 2.261. So, you can find what is m 2 after the shock m 2 after the shock is 0 0.539 and p 2 by p 1 uh, is uh, 5.797 and uh, you can also get p 0 2 by p 0 1 uh, which is 0 0.6 all these are available in uh, normal shock tables. Okay. So, now you look at this uh, problem you know that a e by a 2 is uh, 2 uh, this can be written as a e by 
A star uh, multiplied by that is A E by uh, A 2 star multiplied by A 2 star by A 2. Uh, now, A 2 star by A 2 uh, this should now correspond to M 2 uh, because the flow has passed through a normal shock is for M 2 that is uh, 0 0.539. So, um, now if we do uh, calculate uh, for M 2 the A 2 by A 2 star is 1.2718. So, A E by A E star okay, uh, this is also equal to A 2 star uh, is uh, now 2 uh, multiplied by um, 1.2718 which is um, 2.54. 36 and uh, for this the subsonic Mach number m exit will be 0 0.2351. So, this is uh, how we can calculate uh, the exit Mach number when there is a shock uh, sitting in the uh, divergent portion of the convergent area convergent divergent duct. What is uh, we are interested in P e by P 0 1 uh, this is P e by P 0 e multiplied by P 0 e by P 2 multiplied by P 2 by P 1 multiplied by P 1 by P 0 1. Uh, now, this all these numbers we know for uh, 0 0.2351 uh, for this Mach number P e b by P naught e is 0 0.962 and uh, P 2 by P naught E is the same as P naught 2 uh, that is for uh, the value of 0 0.539 um, that is 0 0.821 and uh, P 2 by P 1 is uh, that is known P 2 by P 1 5.797 and uh, P 1 by P 0 1 is known 0 0.085 ok. So, uh, uh, finally, from this we get 0 0.577 that means it is 5.77 bar. So, uh, you can see that this value is uh, greater than uh, the uh, second uh, critical point, uh, the value for the uh, second critical point where um, it was just uh, after uh, that is the second critical point. Okay, so, the shock is at the exit while shock here is at half uh, that of the divergent portion after the shock you still have a divergent area. So, uh, shock is somewhere here. So, uh, it, the flow is supersonic all through until the shock then it becomes subsonic then it undergoes isentropic uh, diffusion that is uh, it undergoes uh, deceleration. Uh, velocity decreases, pressure increases. So, uh, through this uh, uh, elaborate example, uh, I hope uh, that uh, the concepts related to operation of convergent divergent nozzles are uh, clear. Uh, so, uh, there are uh, various as uh, the pressure ratio across the nozzle changes, various operating conditions take place. Uh, the first important point is the point at which mass flow rate chokes in the nozzle, but uh, flow uh, may be still subsonic. Uh, once pressure ratio is decreased continuously decreased after that supersonic flows start in the divergent portion, but it may not last until they exit. The limit of that is uh, supersonic flow happens all through the divergent portion, but uh, there is a shock at the exit. The exact operating condition is when there are no shocks at all and uh, the uh, nozzle expands so that uh, the exit pressure matches the back pressure at supersonic flows that is known as the correct designed uh, operating conditions. The pressure ratio across the nozzle is often referred to as the nozzle pressure ratio uh, that is uh, NPR. So, many places you will find NPR. Mm, NPR is always uh, back pressure by stagnation pressure. Okay. So, 
or vice versa P naught by P B that is not the exit pressure. So, uh, exit pressure can be different uh, when this uh, uh, nozzle operates in the under expanded or over expanded uh, regimes. So, uh, with this discussion on nozzles, uh, we will move ahead with diffusers. In diffusers, we face uh, uh, some other problems. Uh, in nozzles, we had uh, shocks in the divergent uh, section. Uh, Let us look at uh, diffusers in the coming class and see what problems we face there. Thank you.